Hello, friends. This is Pastor David Lankford. We'd like to take the opportunity today to invite you with us to this special edition of the Voice of Evangelism International Ministries. For some few weeks now, we've been praying about bringing this particular video to the viewing audience. The reason being is because we have been predetermined always in our minds to never be sensational, to not sensationalize anything when it comes to the scriptures, neither the word of God in any capacity. There's a lot of people out there who are purveyors of hype, rhetoric, jargon. And because of that, we choose to be as biblically sound as we possibly can be. But for the last few weeks, I've been pondering the verse in Isaiah chapter 45 and expressly verse 3. Steve Quill and I, months ago, over a year ago, spoke of Donald Trump being a type of King Cyrus in Isaiah chapter 45. But from that point onward, God began to deal with me particularly about verse 3 in our scripture text. This verse, though it's not a lengthy verse, is powerfully inundated with truth. And this truth is going to be a revelation to this nation. Our nation has become very, very wicked. Our leadership is morally corrupt. They are dysfunctional. They are crooked, to say the least. And there's two sets of laws, one for you and I, the deep state subjects, and another law for the elite. Jesus Christ, Elohim, Jehovah, has always blessed a true balance. We're told in Proverbs that a false balance is an abomination unto God. What does that mean? Simply means putting one's thumb on the scale, telling the people you're buying 16 ounces of a product, but rather the truth is you're only getting 13 ounces. This kind of justice God abhors. And our nation has grown more corrupt, more vile, and more wicked through the years because America has lost her God consciousness. Now that phrase, God consciousness, is of great significance. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4, the psalmist said, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all of his thoughts. The more this nation becomes godless, the more sin begins to run rampant. The more dishonesty, the more crookedness, the greater the perverseness. Romans 1 and 28, Paul said, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Once a person becomes a reprobate, they are void of judgment. In other words, God has already adjudicated them. God has judged them. God has damned their souls. And they're just waiting for their punishment to come to fruition. They don't acknowledge God in their thoughts. Every day as a Christian, you and I incorporate God in our decision making. When the devil tempts you or I to steal something, our God consciousness says, you cannot say that, you cannot do that, you cannot take that because it is not rightfully yours. And because of your God consciousness, you always envelop God into your thought process because you have a reverence and a fear for God. Proverb 1.7 said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. When one loses a wholesome fear and awe and reverence for God, then the boundary lines are enlarged and expand exponentially. And then men get out of the boundaries of righteousness and they begin to live under the auspices, under the boundaries of wickedness and iniquity. Regretfully, that's what has taken place in America. 
I want to share today from Isaiah chapter 45. I want to begin in verse 1, but we're going to expound verse 3. Isaiah 45, beginning at verse 1, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two levied gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Again, if I were going to put a topic on this subject today, if I were going to identify it, it would simply be a revelation to a nation. When Jehovah gives a revelation, it is for the express purpose of revealing something that has been previously hidden. Let me say that again. When God gives anyone, and I'm talking about America, I'm talking about our nation, when God gives anyone a revelation, he's revealing something that previously has been hidden. It's been concealed. No one knew it except maybe the purveyors themselves. But to those of us who live in paths of righteousness, we don't see the secret, vile, wicked elements in our nation because they are purposely hidden in secret places by the rulers of the darkness of this world. Again, I want you to look with me at verse 3. I want the, uh, the verse there that you see on the screen. I want you to look at this verse closely. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Just as Jehovah gave Cyrus the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches, I believe Jehovah is going to do the same with President Donald Trump. The treasures of darkness and the hidden riches has absolutely nothing to do with wealth or with money. I want to say that again. The treasures of darkness and the hidden riches have absolutely nothing to do with money or with wealth. It is something far greater something more powerful. It is something that men have hidden. And that if these secret riches, these hidden riches, these secret treasures were revealed, they would be so indicting. They would bring about the demise of the people who are the rulers of the darkness of this world. These treasures that Isaiah is sharing here with us are a plethora of information or information concerning the evil doers of our nation. I, I don't mean to be condescending here, but our nation is a nation filled with evil doers. Paul said in 2 Timothy 3:13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now listen to that verse. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Is this not what's been taking place in America for decades now? There is such a corruptness. We were told by the previous administration, the new norm for 
growth in this nation, production in this nation, jobs in this nation is only 2%. That's a lie. Everything that Satan does is based upon a lie. When Jesus came out of the temple and he sat down at the Mount of Olives in Matthew chapter 24, and the disciples came to Christ and said, Lord, tell us the signs of thy coming. What shall the end be? To give us insight as to what we ought to be looking for relative to the second advent. Jesus' first recorded words by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John did not record it, but the three other gospels did. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Jesus said these words, Take heed that no man deceive you. Did you hear me? Take heed that no man deceive you. That scripture was not directed specifically at preachers, teachers, false prophets. That scripture is directed at the entirety of humanity. Don't let anyone deceive you by any means. Now, the word means in the Greek means a mode or a method or the wiles of the devil. You need to be weary of the wiles of the devil. Satan is the creator. He's the one that assimilates, that brings together these wiles, and they're for the purpose of your and my destruction. Let us take for just a moment and look at our scripture text at the numbers. Though I was studying this passage 14, 15 months ago, over the last few weeks, I have just sat down, looked at Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 3, and I begin to try to exegete every word, even the numbers. And as I was looking at the numbers, we've all talked about the 45th chapter of Isaiah. Donald Trump is the 45th president. That's insightful. And that is powerful in itself. But then I began to look a little deeper at chapter 45 and verse 3. If you take 4 and 5 and add them together, you come up with the number 9, fruit of the Spirit. You take 3 and add to 9, you come up with the number of 12. What is significant about the number 12? 12 is the number of divine government, the number of divine government. Those of you who visit this website on a regular basis, those of you who get our monthly newsletter just received January's newsletter. And I took the sum total of 2018, 2 and 1 is 3 and 8 is 11. What is significant about the number 11? 11 means disorder. The number 10 means law and responsibility. So we have the number 11, the sum total of the number 2018 is 11, meaning disorder. So we are also in a place of disorder. Now, I would be remiss, I would be derelict if I did not tell you, you're going to witness in the coming days and weeks and months an onslaught, a barrage of attacks against Donald Trump. Anytime God anoints anyone for his purpose, for his reason, Satan is ruthless, relentless, and untiring in his attack against that person. Look at the young man called Joseph. Joseph had nothing to do with God's call on his life. There were 12 sons. He was the one chosen of the 12 to be God's leader. And that brought consternation within his life. That brought strife, envy, backbiting, jealousy, hatred, malice 
Anytime God anoints someone for a work, it creates a tempest, a storm. It causes strife, envy, jealousy, clamor, backbiting, hatredness. Why? Because Satan always attacks God's anointed. Did you see those attacks on Barak, Hussein Obama? No. You know why? He wasn't anointed. He was not possessing the touch, the hand, the power of God upon his life. He was a pawn of the new world order. But when God intervenes, God is intervening for a purpose. Many times in God's divine intervention, it's so he can coordinate and bring everything together as he plans, as he wills, to a zenith, to an apex, to a pinnacle. One of the great revelations God showed me with Joseph, when his brothers sought to put him in the pit, they were going to murder God's chosen, God's elect, what God had ordained, what God had predestined, Joseph's brother were going to murder him. So while they put him in the pit to contemplate, work out their devious plans, their sordid plans, God was waiting for the caravan of Midianites to get to where Joseph was. When the caravan of Midianites got to where Joseph was, they said, hey, let's don't murder him now. Let's sell him as a slave into bondage and he'll be in Egypt and we'll hear no more of Joseph. You see, when Joseph said, you meant this for evil, he said, but God meant it for good. That was true. They were trying to destroy God's plan, just like there were those in the world and in America who are trying to destroy Donald Trump. But that's all right, because God is sovereign. And God can knock down every assault that would come against our president. Now, I admittedly struggled to pray for Barack Hussein Obama. Did I pray for him? Yes. I could have spent more time praying for him, but the wickedness that I witnessed in his life and the things that I witnessed in his subtlety, isn't it amazing that Valerie Jarrett, who was purportedly the one controlling the workings within the administration, was an Iranian and after the administration has been replaced, we hear no more of her. Now we see civil unrest in Iran. You see, the picture is far greater than we can understand, than we can fathom. Everything that's going on right now, the deep state, the rulers of the darkness of this world, mean it for absolute evil. Absolute evil. But God, in his sovereign sovereignty, is going to take this and use it for his glory. Again, 45, the sum total is 9. Verse 3, the number 3, is 12, meaning divine government. Not only do I believe this is a divine government, this is a divinely timed government. There's, there's so much that is so significant about time. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalms 31, 15, my times are in your hand. Good time, bad time, a time of having children, a time of marriage, a time of weeping, a time of brokenness, a time of burials, funerals, bereavement, a time of planning, a time of reaping, a time of building up, a time of tearing down a time of peace, and a time of war. David said, my times are in your hand. So whatever time it is, it's in God's hand. Now let's look again at Isaiah 45, verse 3. I want that put up on the screen. Verse 3, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, 
which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Let us look at this passage of Scripture and see what we can glean as we exegete in detail these words. Jehovah told King Cyrus, I will give you these treasures. Treasures. The word treasures in the Greek means a depository, a storehouse, a cellar. What kind of treasures has God placed within a depository? What has God placed in a storehouse, or let me say it this way, what has God allowed to be placed in a depository, in a storehouse, or a cellar? Darkness. Darkness. Look at verse 3 again. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Look at that. Put it up on the screen. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. I will give you a depository. I will give you a storehouse. I will give you a cellar full of darkness. Darkness. Darkness, according to the book of Exodus, is tangible. When God sent the plague of darkness in the land of Egypt, the darkness could be felt. It literally could be felt. It was tangible. The word darkness here in the Hebrew speaks of misery. It speaks of wickedness of ungenerated men. Darkness is a place wherein light. Darkness is a place wherein light has been withheld. Listen to that statement. Darkness is a place where light has been withheld. The longer the light has been withheld, the greater the darkness and the greater the treasures. Treasures of darkness. Treasures of darkness, treasures of darkness. Because the light has been withheld, these treasures have grown exponentially. And many believe they've gotten by with even murder. Where there has been darkness, where there has been darkness, I believe God is now going to shed light on that darkness. See, I believe in Isaiah 45 and verse 3 here, he's speaking to us about our nation because this is a revelation to a nation. There are deep, dark treasures that have been concealed a depository, a storehouse, a cellar of information. And as that darkness has covered those treasures, those treasures have grown exponentially. Why? Because those who have created the darkness have continued to bring in more wickedness and it's growing and growing and glo gro gro growing. And because it is in darkness and there's no light shining upon it, then they expand their evil deeds. Let's go back to Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So in the beginning, before God began his formation of creation, he shined light into the darkness. Who created that darkness? 
Lucifer, Satan. His despotic fall. In Luke 10, 18, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Many theologians believe there was a great obliteration, the vicissitudes, the changes in the cosmos, this literal universal explosion, not the Big Bang Theory, this was demonic, that it obliterated the world and the galaxy, the universe as we understand and know it. Thus, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, and thus the earth went dark. It became filled without form and void and darkness. And then the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. That light shines in the darkness. John chapter 1, verses 4 or 5. Jesus says, or John, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Without light, there can be the process, there can be no process known as photosynthesis, where algae and uh, foliage and greenery, all this begins to grow. Light is needed. In Jesus is life and the light of men. If you don't have the light of Christ, you remain in darkness. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Where does darkness go when you turn the light on in a room? It just disappears. Just that quick, the darkness is gone. Where did it go? The darkness cannot comprehend. The darkness cannot remain where the light is. We've all, especially us here in the South, have been in a place, a business, a, a home, an office, or wherever, and at night you turn the lights off, and guess what? The cockroaches come out. A poor analogy, I know. Forgive me, please. Well, the lights come on. The cockroaches go back into the darkness. They hide. They cannot fathom. They cannot comprehend the light. They do their work in the darkness. Now listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 19. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Why would men want to embrace darkness? I'll tell you why. Their deeds are evil. It's done under the cover of darkness. Now, when I'm talking about darkness now, I'm talking about spiritual darkness. I'm not talking about natural light or an incandescent light or an LED or a filament. I'm talking about spiritual light versus spiritual darkness. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They're doing so much dishonesty, so much corruptness, so much wickedness. They operate under the cover, the guise of darkness. God is about to shine the light. Hello, friends. This is Pastor David Langford. I'd like to take the time to make mention of our latest book, The New Jerusalem Bride and the Mystery of the Church. For many years, I've heard people talk about the church being the bride of Christ. But when I began to search the scriptures, I found out that was a misnomer. That's not scriptural. If the church is the bride of Christ, who then is the body of Christ? Can't be both. In this book, I do a thorough examination of Revelation 21 verses 2 and verse 9 and I saw New Jerusalem, 
descending out of God from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. The Bible is perfectly clear. The bride is that new Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God as a bride adorned for her husband. If you want those questions answered, you'll find them in this book, The New Jerusalem Bride and the Mystery of the Church. Remember, Ephesians 5, Paul said the church is a mystery. It is like a husband and a wife in marriage. They're one. I invite you to get this book. You get this book by writing me at The Voice of Evangelism, Post Office Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. Or just go to our website, click on the shop place there to buy the books, and order your book, and my wife will get it out to you as soon as possible. Again, for $15 love gift, postage paid, we'll get this book out to you entitled The New Jerusalem Bride and the Mystery of the Church. I believe you'll find this book to be tremendously enlightening, opening your heart to many biblical truths that have been hidden And it also corrects the error that we've heard espoused for many, many years that the church is the bride of Christ. Nowhere in the scriptures is the church described as a woman, a female, or a bride, but rather it is the body of Christ. Again, go to our website, shop. You can get this book for $15, postage paid, and we'll send it out to you. Again, that address is The Voice of Evangelism. Post Office Box 502, Kaser, C-A-S-A-R, North Carolina, 28020. God bless you, my friend. Ephesians 5.11, Paul said, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have you noticed the demeanor, the disposition of Donald Trump? He's always reproving. He's always rebuking. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed how he seems to be a man of profuse condescension when he addresses people, especially those who attack him? And he said in the beginning, you hit me, I hit back, I hit harder. Where does this man get this strength? Where does this man get this strength where he does not crumble under the fatigue of all the battering? God. A normal, natural man could not withstand the barrage of attacks. I I, I mean, they are daily. His mental state, now it's dementia, now he's crazy, now he's a lunatic, On and on and on and on and on. It never ceases. Why is there such an attack? Because the light is exposing the dark treasures. You and I are told in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? There can be no communion. There can be no fellowship. And have you noticed, seemingly when someone leaves the Trump administration, there's a almost absolute severing? They're just done with. Why? When God amputates the darkness from the light, it is perpetually severed, per se. It's done in such a way that it cannot be yoked up together again. So we're told, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? It's important. It's imperative to understand this. Look again with me. Isaiah 45, verse 3. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden Riches of secret places. Hidden riches. The word hidden there in the Hebrew means a secret storehouse, a secreted place of buried values. 
What he's telling us, someone has hidden in the confines of our nation, in the confines of our government, in the confines of alphabet agencies, they've buried very, very valuable treasures that they don't want anyone to ever know about or able to ever secure or to ever capture. So they hide them in such a way thinking that no one can get to them. How much wickedness has been concealed and buried in all of these government institutions and alphabet agencies? How much buried valuable treasures that they believe in their own mind they've hidden and no one can get to these hidden treasures? You cannot hide anything from God that God cannot find it. Let's look at the word riches. The covering up of something important, something of great significance, to hide something with purpose, to hide something with intent. The covering up of something important. Do I need, must I ask you the question? Do you believe there's been any cover-ups in this nation? Do you believe there's been injustices, crimes, criminality, evil things done that have been concealed, that have been covered up for the express purpose of not allowing anyone to know the truth? Folks, everyone knows that 9-11 was predetermined. All, all the things that took place there are just unbelievable. Even some time ago, Bill Clinton slipped and said that the Pentagon was bombed. Bombed? I thought a plane flew into it. Yet there is no footage anywhere, no footage anywhere showing a plane ever hit the Pentagon. Nowhere. But someone got a piece of footage from one of the cameras at the Pentagon showing a missile coming into the building. Now, I know people say, oh, that's, you're a conspiratist. You're, you're, you're an idiot. Let me tell you who's an idiot. People who believe lies and don't seek the truth. I said earlier in this video, Satan's deception is based upon lies. Every deception is founded on a lie. That's why it's called deception. You have been deceived because you've been lied to. I don't know how much God will expose through this Trump administration, and only time will tell, but I believe there's much going to come out in the very near future. In other words, these riches were hidden with purpose. They were hidden with intent. Where were they hidden? Secret places. A secret place. This is what the Hebrew says. A secret place where someone has concealed a covert operation. Something that has been hidden by covering it up. These secret places and revelations were given to King Cyrus to prove the lordship of the God of Abraham. Jehovah will do the same thing. I believe with the Trump administration and will allow Donald Trump to uncover hidden treasures, secret treasures hidden in secret places. There may be some things come out that you and I didn't even know existed. Why? They've been concealed on purpose through a covert operation. Listen to that Hebrew meaning again of the words that there, secret places, secret places, a secret place where someone has concealed a covert operation, something that has been hidden up by covering it. They put a, a blanket, they conceal it. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What is God saying? I'm the God of all flesh. That's a powerful statement. You remember the ravens? 
that fed Elijah, brought meat to him. God was the God of the flesh of birds, God of the flesh of chickens, the flesh of chickens, the rooster crowed, indicted Peter. When he said, I'm the God of all flesh, he caused a jackass to talk to Balaam. Opened the, 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 the Bible said, Peter said, he opened the dumb ass mouth and the ass spoke and said, why are you beating me? He's the God of the flesh of donkeys. He's the, he's the God of the flesh of fish. He charged a great fish, most believe it was a whale, to swallow up Jonah. Jesus told Peter, go down to the Sea of Galilee. You're going to catch a fish. In his mouth is going to be a shekel to pay our taxes. God's the God of the fish, fowls of the heaven, donkeys, beast of the field. He's also the God of our flesh. Revelation 17, 17, you've heard me quote this verse scores and scores of times in the last 25 years. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. Revelation 17, 17, for God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill whose will? God's will. Not theirs, God's will. Our nation and many of the alphabet agencies will be exposed for their vast cover-ups. I believe they will be daisy-chained or linked together, thus connecting as well as revealing many secrets. These revealed secrets will suddenly bring disgrace and paramount shame to the media. The media holds an element of responsibility for what's taking place in this nation. The media was supposed to be the freedom of speech, to be able to tell you and I, who are lay people in the world, the truth about our government, about our leaders, about what's taking place. But instead, the rulers of the darkness of this world have used most of the media to be purveyors of their lies and to further their cover-up concerning this darkness. So many in the media today are so dishonest. I'm going to say something here that's disturbing. It's debased in a sense. But you've got Don Lemon, Anderson Cooper, who are avowed sodomites. Rachel Maddow, an avowed lesbian. Now, let's just lay Christianity to the side. I'm a man of reason. I'm a man of pragmatism. I want to be a man of understanding. Do you think I want to get my news from a sodomite who doesn't understand his sexuality and he's, he is so perverted she is so perverted that they think sodomy is natural and normal. And I want those people telling me what's going on in the world. If you don't understand that sodomy, homosexuality, is a flagrant sin, an abomination against God, you have no right to try to tell me anything about anything because you don't even understand the simplistic of your sexuality. You don't understand how anatomically God designed your body and how the men were to be the soul lovers of the women and the women were to be the soul lovers of the men. Not men loving men and women loving women. No. When God made Adam and Eve, he didn't make them Adam and Steve. He didn't put two men in a garden. He didn't put two women in the garden. He put a man and a woman. And you think I'm going to sit there? I don't care who they are. I don't care how many Ph. doctors they have in journalism. They're not journalists. They're purveyors of the darkness of this world. 
And you expect me to sit there and listen to that and believe that's the news? If you have a slant that perverted on sexuality, what will you do with the truth? What will you do with the truth? Even though there's a small measure of those in the media who have purported a very minuscule measure of truthfulness, they will also be embarrassed. They will also be ashamed because they have been exposed for their dishonesty as well. But it will be far too late for the media. For they will not humble themselves, and neither will they admit that they were purveyors of the lies. They were part of the misrepresentation of truth because that would make them guilty. So they're going to continue to live, for the most part, in denial. There may be one or two small outlets of news that may come back and say, we were wrong. I don't believe they will. As a matter of fact, most media outlets will not even care that they have been exposed. Listen, it should be a shame for, for men who are avowed sodomites to get on television and act like they're normal to the people. You're not normal. You are not normal, and the people who live that lifestyle are not normal. I don't say that to bash, to lambast, to castigate. I say that because you're not normal. I wasn't normal when I was a sinner. I did all sorts of crazy things. Sin and sinners are not normal people. Man is a beast without God. Man is subject to do any vile thing without a God consciousness. What makes a 40-year-old man want to molest a two-year-old baby? Is that not a beast? Man is a beast without God. Oh, just because they put a coat and tie on and they have great speech Orators, they can speak with fluidity? No. They're beasts. They're animals without God. Again, this is the power of deception. Adolf Hitler said he learned one major thing in prison. What was it? He said, I learned the power of propaganda. And that's where we get this phrase, tell a lie, tell it often enough, you'll begin to believe it's the truth. That was that come from Hitler. He overthrew the what we would call the German Congress, overthrew Paul Van Bond Hindenburg, Paul Van Hindenburg, the, the big balloon, the Hindenburg, that was named after Paul Von Hindenburg. He overthrew, got the Congress in his control, et cetera, et cetera. I won't get into all the history there. But he said he learned the power of propaganda. Tell a lie, tell it often enough, and you, the one who started the lie, you'll suddenly begin to believe. That is the truth, but it's not. The media has been used by the rulers of the darkness of this world to export their plots, their lies, and their deception. After this is exposed for what it is, I believe there'll be some news media outlets that will cease to exist after the fallout. Satan's greatest tool is a lie. Why is it his greatest tool? The very first tool that Satan used against man was in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3, 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. He lied to her. He lied to her. That's why deception is based on a lie, and lies are Satan's greatest tools. John 8, 44, Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. God despises lies. Revelation 21, 8. All liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. There is a special place in the lake of fire for people who lie. But here's the problem. Romans 1, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools 
Romans 1 25 says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. What did Paul say they would do? They would change the truth of God. They would turn the truth of God into a lie. What did Satan do in the garden? He turned the truth of God into a lie. And he worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. See, Satan is a creature. He's not, a, he's not the creator, God is. But when you turn the truth into a lie, you get dumbed down and you as a creature begin to worship the creature instead of the creator. And that's where we are. This, my friend, is the time for prayer, a time for fasting. We've always encouraged you, the, the listener, the viewer, to fast with us in January. David said in Psalms 35, 13, I'll humble my soul with fasting and my prayer return to my bosom. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 21, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. We must fast and we must pray. And I want you to pray that God would give his angels charge concerning Donald Trump. Listen to this verse found in Psalms 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. We should pray that God would give his angels command, that they would go and protect our president and watch over him. Well, that's the kind of strength that this administration needs. The powers of the rulers of the darkness of this world are going to create so much havoc on such a scale that it will it'll almost be unfathomable. If we're not careful as believers, we will get discouraged. Listen to me. I'm, I'm going to close up with this. I'm going to wind it down and shut it down. If you're not careful, there's going to be such an inundation, a perpetual inundation of attacks on Donald J. Trump that if you're not careful, you'll get discouraged and say, we're going to lose. Now, if I was pinned down and had to answer, why has God given America a reprieve? This is what I believe. Because when God does adjudicate this nation, he can say, the very last thing I did was bless you. Because I blessed you exponentially, I have no recourse but to judge you harshly. Remember Deuteronomy 28. There were 68 verses in that chapter. 14 speak of blessing. 54 speak of curses. So you got just a small measure of blessing verses and a large measure of cursing scripture verses. Think about that. 14 scripture verses on blessings, 54 scripture verses on curses. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Why will they create such havoc against Donald Trump? To keep these secrets and these secret treasures, these hidden riches from the public's eye. When someone is about to be exposed, they go out of their way to cover up their crime or their sin or whatever the, the, the case might be. They, 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 they try to think of everything. And then they get sinister and they try to create a, a subterfuge, a deception, a lie, casting the light away from them and bringing the light to another subject. You can't do God like that. You may deceive men. You may trick men. You may manipulate men. But men can never, can never manipulate God. You can't do it. Here's a verse I want to give you. 1 John 5 and 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Don't give up. Keep fasting. 
keep praying, shoot your prayers toward heaven's throne and say, God, protect this administration till the truth is exposed about all of these evil things, these secret treasures, these hidden riches and secret places. God, manifest them that we as children of God might know the truth. Jesus said in John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. There's only one thing that sets men free, and that is the truth. God bless you till next time. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for loving us. Without your help, without your love, without your prayers, without your support, we would not have the wherewithal to preach the gospel the way God has allowed us to preach it. And you know we preach uncompromisingly. Until next time, may the Lord God of Abraham forever order your steps in his word, and may the mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ abide in your heart and your life and in your family in these last days. God bless you. Until next time. The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford is brought to you by the faithful listeners and supporters throughout America. If you're looking for an uncompromising message, we invite you to tune in each week to The Voice of Evangelism. For more information, write to The Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. That's P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020.